Facebook, you can't be a barrel roll. Oh, you just want to, okay, you're on YouTube now, I get it, I get it. So, um, if anyone else wants to yell it out before we get going, <laughs> get out of your system now. No, that's it? Okay. Um, so, today we're going to take a look at uh, negative signs, basically how negatives affect graphs. So, the first one of these two. Now, um, if you don't have a graphing calculator with you, that's okay. I've got some software here that we can look at uh, as we go. So the first one is the graph y equals square root of x. So if you haven't seen the square root graph before, then uh, this is about what it looks like. Yeah. So this sort of curve that goes up slowly here on the right side of the graph, and I'll transfer that onto our notes. So that's the pretty version. Now you get to see my best rendition of that. So a couple of key points here. And no, that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay. So can anybody want to make a prediction? What do you think is going to happen um, if we stick a negative sign in front of the x? What do you think? Um, that's correct if it was positive. But um, thinking about what you just said is going to help us figure out what's going to happen to this. Because, for example, if I put in x equals negative 1, negative, negative 1, and then we're back to the real world, right? Positive 1 square root. So what do you think is going to happen? It'll be underneath, okay? It'll be on the opposite side, okay? Anything else? It explodes. Okay, well, let's take a look at the, uh, the software and see what happens. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the negative sign. And there we go. So it shows up on the left-hand side. Now, why do you think that is? I'm going to transfer this over. We'll see. Uh, why do you think that is? Any ideas? And it's not just because I put a negative sign in front of the X. I would like to know why. Somehow I don't think I'm going to be as successful at drawing. Um, sure, Anthony. That's okay. If it comes okay. back... Oh, if, if it's a more positive, it would be a, the imaginary number of steps is not set up on the left. That's correct. So we can't use the numbers on the right side anymore. But in general, like... Um, if this wasn't the square root graph, would this still happen, right? Or like, how, how do we, can we predict this behavior? Is there anyone with a good explanation of why this happens? And sorry, by good, I should also say something that someone not in math 12 could probably understand. Something that's simple enough that they go, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That is entirely correct. Um, I'm just going to change a couple words in there to, to make it sound a little bit more grade two level kind of stuff. Um, basically, where I'm at here, like let's just say I was positive 4 on the original graph. Okay, so this is where my finger is now at positive 4. When I stick a negative sign in front, that means I'm going to be over here. right? If I was at positive 2, I would flip over to negative 2. So basically what happens is if I start life here, the negative sign sends me to here. If I started life there, the negative sign makes me jump over. So putting a negative in front makes all those points on the graph jump to the other side. What used to be 4 is now negative 4. Okay. So it's important that you think about translate, or sorry, that you think about reflections in this way because um, we put it in front of the, the x, and it's very tempting for people to go, oh, yeah, a negative in front of the x makes a reflection in the x-axis because we just we like things that way. X's line up with x's. But it's not true. The reflection is actually happening along the y-axis. So if I was to draw sketch here. This is the reflection on the y-axis. Okay, So it's actually kind of backwards. That's why I don't like you thinking about those hard, fast rules. What you should say is, what happens when I stick a negative in front of x? Positive x's become negative x's. Negative x's become positive. My hand is jumping across the y-axis when I move things. So it's the y-axis that's the mirror. Okay, That's the way to think about it so you don't have to uh, make that small, careless mistake. We're getting there, so you're, you're ahead of us. Um, we'll take a look at another graph here. Um, this one is x cubed minus 125 cubed root. 
So somewhere in all the you know free time that I end up having, I manage to dream up these ridiculous graphs, like as if you guys really care how interesting the graph's going to look. But believe it or not, uh, I did spend a little bit of time thinking about it before I put it on there. So um, here's roughly. Let me just make sure I'm. Okay, um, so that's kind of, oh, I think your graph goes to 8, so maybe I'll change it to 8. Okay, so here's uh, what that graph looks like. It's kind of like a straight line that somebody karate chopped into, that's not a karate chop, that's a karate kick. That somebody karate kicked at the uh, origin, and it went like that. So this is known as the karate graph. Hey, 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 where you have the a bowling ball dropped into something very soft. Something that left a good dent. So, um, can you imagine now what's going to happen to this graph when we stick a negative sign in front of x? Okay, that's what I want you to do is see if you can visually picture what's going to happen. So I'll transfer well, this. Just think about it. You don't need to. Just think about it. See if you can visualize it. See if I can come up with some points on this graph here. So I know uh, this was a point here. This was a point here. What else did we? Oops. What else did we have? We had um, 7 and 6, it looks like. So, something like this. So, of course, you know, my artistic skills are limited, but I'll give it a good shot. It's going to kind of look like that. Sort of. <laughs> Make me proud. Make it better than mine. There you go. It's not a very tough standard. So what I'm going to do this time, it's hard for you to see the software. I, well, maybe you can, but um, I'm just going to replace that x. That's all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some brackets around it and make a negative in front. Okay. So now when I do this, in case I don't think it really matters what what matters if there's a negative sign in there. Does or is it in or outside brackets? Is it because the exponent is odd? Right. It it, it, it won't. But in general, just to make, be safe, I'll I just do that. So, anyways, you're correct, Anthony. But um, Let's take a look at the picture again. Try and picture what it's kind of a complicated looking graph. So if you can picture what this is going to look like, you're in really, really good visual kind of. I couldn't do it without having to peek a little bit. But you can oh. see the reflection quite clearly now on this graph. That it, even though it's a really complicated, it still obeys the same rule. What was on the positive side is now on the negative side. Oh, hey, that's not a function. Um, no, because there's two graphs there. This would be the graph by itself. But if I show you the one graph, you don't really get to see the reflection. So I put both on. So well, here's a. Well, then you're you're a better visual better visual skills than I do because I I can't see them without them together there. Okay, so. The only real obstacle is your shadow. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm working on that. As soon as I figure out how to get rid of my shadow, I'll uh, I'll try to. Okay, so it's kind of gonna go like this. Oh, that's terrible. Let me try again. Okay, good enough. So the reflection still happens. Um, we're going to summarize what we've just seen. So if we have the graph y equals f of x, and we want to figure out how it relates to the new one that's been moved, um, what happens is it's been changed by a by reflecting. graph about the y-axis. Good. Y-axis. Okay? Now, if we wanted to figure out where does a point move if we have to move a single point, if it was xy, is it now going to become negative xy? Okay? So the same thing, it's just we make the x-coordinate negative. That makes it jump across the y-axis. Hence, we get a reflection. Okay? So, um, Let's take a look now at uh, what Anthony so cleverly figured out was uh, going to happen vertically. Um, this time we're going to take a look at the graph if we do the square root. And this time we're going to put the negative sign out front. So I'll take uh, that software again. And we'll make y equals square root x. Enjoy. Question. Yeah. Yes. Why do you always use red? Uh, I feel like red jumps up off the board a little brighter. Well, it's just me. Um, well, it's kind of boring. Well, maybe I'll switch up to some more colors just for you then, okay? Maybe I'll throw purple in there and, and orange. That's kind of like the, the orange that's in there, though. It's kind of like a, a 
goofy orange. It's not really like a, ah, I don't know, it doesn't look all that. Anyways, anyways, we can still do math even if we had black and white, so that's the good news. Here's Yay. the square root graph we had before. Okay, so we'll transfer that in a second. And this time, uh, I put the negative sign in front. So I'll, I'll let you actually look at the full reflection. Okay, so that's what happens if we put the negative sign in front. Okay, so let's transfer those two graphs and we can talk about them. So this is uh, roughly the original again. It's still recording, right? It is still recording. Okay. And I only get 15 minutes of YouTube time, so when you see me looking at my watch, it's not because I'm anxious to get out of here, it's because uh, I uh, have to make sure I can stop the video before then. Okay, so... Just so I can see the reflection, you may want to add it in your notes like this too, just so you remember that the reflection happens along the x-axis this time. So there used to be a section in Math 12 for uh, conic sections, which is uh, kind of an interesting thing to look at, but unfortunately uh, we don't have time to do that, so it's better that it's not there and we can slow down and, and do things properly. But when we did have conic sections, Math 12 students from like four or five years ago would know what all these equations were. Does anybody know what these equations are here? Curvy? curvy? Yeah, they're going to be curvy. Yeah. So let's take a look and, uh, and see here. I think you'll, uh, if you maybe had like 25 minutes or something to work on it, you might be able to figure out what it is because you have seen this before. It's just in a different form. So there you go. The semicircle. That's the equation for a semicircle. It basically says five squared minus x squared, square root. That's Pythagoras' theorem. It's basically going, take all the points which are a distance of five away. So it's a distance of five here, five, five, five from the origin. So five, 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 five all like that. And then you trace those points, that's what you get. So um, the reason I picked that one, I guess, if we're doing a reflection on the x-axis, well, then you get a full circle. So the top and bottom of the circle show up when we stick the negative in front there. It's not a function, no. But again, it's just to show where the reflection shows up. So the first one, we're at uh, a circle with radius 5. And I just want to take this back and check out how awesome those circles are. There we go. I was thinking about doing it, but I don't know. Whoops. time we got the reflection happening like so. Well, no, not even for my standard, that's pretty bad. There we go. Okay, now that's not bad. Okay, so these are uh, what happened from the reflection. And again, this may help you in your notes if you just put a little dashed line. The reflection again is on the x-axis. negative f of x, how could we describe that? First word's easy, four brownie points, keep it simple, press the teacher, starts with an R. Hey, genius, reflecting is correct, yeah, so reflecting, and reflecting what, how could you describe it? Along the x-axis. Okay, so if the point x, y was on the regular graph, where would you expect to find it if we pulled this reflection? Anybody brave enough to uh, take a guess where it's going to be? x, y is now going to be located at x negative y. Good. So what's happened is, just like before, now what was positive is negative. And if you look at where my finger is moving, it's across the x-axis. That's why the mirror ends up being along the x-axis. Okay, so same reason. When we put it in front, all those y values go from positive to negative. They end up flipping. Okay, so it's your turn. It's a good time for me to make a part two of the video. So here are the two, uh, two questions we'll be working on. We're going to recap these together and see how you do coming uh, so up with those. So we passed 15 minutes, and now we're on to 16. We are 
are probably about 14, so I gotta stop it. <laughs>